I talked previously in my iMac replacement build video about some of the problems encountered with crowdfunded PC cases. While many of these cases look great on paper, they are often hard to find, prohibitively expensive, or never really make it to market. Since recording that video, which can be found right up here in the cards, a generous viewer has allowed me the opportunity to get my hands on one of these elusive startup PC cases. And I wasn't disappointed. This is the NKS M1, and its origin story should sound familiar to you. It began as a collaborative effort between two small form factor PC enthusiasts, the hard form community, and eventually Lian Li engineers, who ultimately ended up manufacturing the case. And unlike many of its counterparts, the M1 is a case that you can actually buy. The campaign has ended, people are actually getting their cases, and they're not backordered. You can go online right now and buy one. The current version, the V5, is on sale at sfflab.com for $195. And I know that sounds expensive, and that's because it is. But what exactly are we looking at here? What does that $200 get you? It gets you a very tiny, yet extremely functional case. And it measures 250 by 160 by 338 millimeters. It has a boxy and simplistic design. It kind of threads the line between boring and elegant, and at the risk of being crucified in the comments section, it reminds me of an Apple product in that way. Precision perforations for ventilation and a chamfered front panel help give the case a bit of needed character. There's also no branding on the case other than a subtle end case logo on the front panel. At the back of the case, you will find a plaque that lists the brand, model, and revision number. Quality on a case of this caliber is obviously paramount. It has a reinforced lightweight aluminum chassis and 1.5 millimeter thick all aluminum side panels, and they come with either a silver or a black brushed aluminum finish. Both side panels and the top are aligned with 1,462 precision cut perforations for ventilation, and I know this because I counted them. The materials and overall look and feel of the entire package help to greatly increase the perceived value. But the layout is where things actually get interesting and where I think most people are willing to overlook that $195 price tag. It has what many would consider a traditional motherboard and graphics card layout, with the motherboard standing upright and the graphics card sticking out of a PCI slot. It does not, however, have a power supply shroud underneath the motherboard. Instead, the power supply is intended to be mounted in front of the motherboard closer toward the front of the case with the cables pointed downward. And SFX power supplies are what they recommend, although it does also fit full-size ATX power supplies. There's also no space behind the motherboard for cables, which means your cable management needs to be done in the same interior volume as the rest of your components. You just need to use a little bit of extra caution that your cables aren't choking some of your components that need fresh air, and they're also not getting caught in any of the fan blades. And one of the most unique features of the case is the optional cutout for a vertical slot loading optical drive. The case comes in two designs, one with and one without an optical drive cutout. The owner of this case opted not to include it, but if you wanted one, you could essentially just replace the top panel with one that has the cutout. I don't know if they sell those individually, but I guess you could trade with someone. The front I.O. is definitely interesting. This is the first case I have encountered where the I.O. is actually placed near the bottom of the case. Access to the front I.O. is given by this elegant front panel cutout. The layout is pretty basic. It has one microphone jack, one headphone jack, a power button, and two USB 3.0 ports. And this works fine for the majority of USB devices. However, if you have something that's a little bit wider than normal, the front panel is just thin enough to allow wider USB devices to be plugged in entirely. Particularly tall devices like an SD card reader are too close to the floor to be plugged in successfully, and they will need to be plugged into the rear. There's probably a better way to say that. There are also several extra parts included with the case, including additional dust filters, fan guards, which are helpful in confined spaces to keep cables from getting caught, and it has a 240 millimeter radiator mount with an attached magnetic dust filter. It didn't always be that way. That was introduced in version four. They swapped out uh, the aluminum radiator mount with an all steel one, which is magnetic, unlike aluminum. And that's what I really like about this whole project is that there are small iterative changes to the case that they gather from consumer feedback. Really cool to see. 
A hard drive cage can also be attached to the side radiator mount if you do not use a 240 millimeter radiator. And there are mounting bars if you need to stack more than one 2.5 inch drives on top of one another. And if you must, it also includes an adapter for a full size ATX power supply. If you look at the rear of the case, you will find space for three PCIe expansion slots. Now, most of these small form factor cases only have two to keep a low profile. This one has three, which is awesome because you can fit triple uh, or two and a half slot graphics cards in there without any problem. And while we're back here at the rear of the case, you can see there are two cutouts with grommets, which are intended to be used for additional external water cooling components, like maybe a reservoir. But now let's talk compatibility. And, and this is kind of the fun part in my opinion, because unlike a, a full tower or a mid tower where you can basically throw in anything you want, you do need to make a conscious decision in every part you select. But not only that, the case has a this or that layout like many small form factor cases. So obviously it only fits a mini ITX motherboard. Some flex fit motherboards with three PCIe slots will fit. The CPU cooler, if you're using an air cooler, is restricted to 130 millimeters tall and a top-down orientation for airflow is recommended considering it will be sucking in air from directly above the CPU and not from front to back like a traditional mid tower. But if liquid is more your speed, then it does offer the ability to house a 240 millimeter radiator for an all-in-one liquid cooler. And I think that's what most people will go for considering it's hard to find a case this tiny that could fit a radiator that big. The graphics card options are a little bit less restrictive. If you're using a dual slot card, it could be up to 317 millimeters, which is plenty big. And if you're using a triple slot card, it's limited to 279 millimeters, which is still decently big. However, keep in mind, a blower style card is definitely recommended because you don't have that traditional intake and exhaust like in a mid or full tower. The graphics card itself will kind of aid in exhausting hot air. And if you do opt for an optical drive, it can be up to 12.7 millimeters thick. It has a surprising amount of versatility when it comes to storage. It can fit up to three three and a half inch drives. One can go on the bottom of the case and two can go on the aforementioned side mounted drive cage. However, if you do that, you cannot use a 240 millimeter radiator. Adversely, you can fit up to three two and a half inch drives. One of them would be placed on the bottom of the case in place of the 3.5 millimeter drive I just mentioned. One would go in place of the optical drive up front and one could be mounted in front of the case and doesn't have to eliminate anything else. However, keep in mind, you do have those mounting brackets that allow you to stack two two and a half inch drives on top of, uh, on top of one another in any of those places. Power supply options are pretty limited. It can work with an ATX power supply up to 160 millimeters. And if you're using an ATX power supply, your graphics card can only be up to 195 millimeters long. So again, unless you absolutely have to, please go with an SFX power supply. You'll have way more options open to you. The range and versatility of the M1 is truly staggering when you consider its diminutive size. But that flexibility comes with a price, effectively a $200 case the Encase M1 finds itself in some really premium territory. My recommendation to you, if you are committed to building a small form factor PC, would be to carefully consider your exact case requirements. The popular Fractal Design Node 202, while not as capable, is an excellent alternative. It's even smaller than the M1 at just 10.2 liters and costs less than half the price. And with the current market the way it is, you're gonna want that extra collateral when it comes time to buy a graphics card. Don't get me wrong, I really like the M1. I've yet to see a more thoughtfully composed case. The fact that the enthusiast community played such an active role in its development definitely shows. It is a fantastic case, but it's not for everyone. A build video of the, in this case is likely coming, again with the market the way it is. No one's really interested in building gaming PCs right now, so I'll have to wait for that market stabilization to happen before I build in it. I didn't want to wait to do this review, uh, until I've built in it. Likely when I do build in it, I'll have some additional commentary, but I felt like I had enough time with the case and know enough about it now to give an informed review, but I may change my mind once that build video happens. But what do you think? Is this a case that you think is worth $200? Are there maybe some alternatives that I should talk about in a future video? Go ahead and leave those comments in the comment section down below. And if you want to watch my review of the Node 202, you can check out that video right there. Additional reviews of other tech parts can be found right here and if you want to purchase the M1 for yourself you can follow the link in the video description and also follow my affiliate link where you can find uh, some other small form factor PCs and also enter our giveaways that we do every month for your chance to win free stuff. Well thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Watch, watch, watch.